Hello, and welcome to Bookies Talk on the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast. I'm Erica O'Rourke, one of the Reader's Advisors here at the library, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Bronwyn Sill, the library's communications coordinator. If you have ever laughed at one of our social media posts, Bronwyn is the one to thank, and I am so thrilled that she's here today. Thanks for having me on, Erica. Normally, I'd say we're going to talk about all things bookish, but today we're actually going to be laser-focused on a specific title, or rather series, Sarah J. Mass's blockbuster romanticy series, A Court of Thorns and Roses. If you haven't heard of this series, it's often referred to as Akatar. It was originally released in May of 2015. There are now five books in the series with at least one more to come. The story follows Feyre Archeron, a huntress who kills a wolf. As punishment, she's captured and taken to the fairy kingdom of Prithian. And that is where things get complicated. I should also say, as we're starting, this is a high-heat, open-door series, something you should be aware of before you start reading it. To say that it has exploded in popularity is a vast understatement. Oh, my, yes. (laughs) It's all over book talk and social media. It regularly tops bestseller lists, as do other series by this author. And that's from a series that was a bestseller when it was released almost a decade ago. So we're looking at basically 10 years of exponentially increasing popularity. The memes just... The memes are just plentiful. Just every time I open Instagram, somebody's talking about it, and it's all sorts of different readers, which is fascinating to me. Absolutely. It's a very big tent. I am in the tent. Let's start out with the basics. How far are you into the series? How many books have you read? I have read all five. (gasps) You have? I have. And I have to say, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm actually not really a reader. Yes, I work at the library. But I don't really read a lot of books. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but libraries are for everyone. That's right. Libraries are for everyone. And there's so much more than just books here. So absolutely, everyone can get something out of the library. But I do love stories and I love learning. But my attention span is so small, which is why I opted for the audiobook in this version. Okay. My understanding is that there are two versions of the audiobook. One is a regular audiobook with a narrator telling the story. The other one is like a dramatic, multicast. Yeah, it's like theatrical. Yeah. Yeah, it has like soundtrack. You can hear their footsteps. Oh. I tried that for one of the books and okay. it was a little too much for me. <laughs> okay, so you prefer the traditional audiobook experience in yeah. this case. Yeah. All right. How would you describe the series? It's really immersive. There's this whole world that you're thrust into, and I love those kind of world-building stories. It just takes you on a ride. (laughs) It really does. Mm -hmm. There's fairies. There's all sorts of other magical creatures. There's magic, but it's also set in, like, a real human world. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of relate to some of the things that Feyre, who is a human, goes through. But it also is really nice to go into that fantasy world of all the other creatures. Someone had told me it was actually a Beauty and the Beast retelling, like a very Hmm. loose Beauty and the Beast retelling. Do you see that at all? Yeah, I guess I can see that. And then it it goes somewhere else. (laughs) (laughs) I know that you said you're not a reader. We actually talk books all the time. So I think you're probably more of a reader than you realize. How did you come across it? I had a friend who's actually a library patron that would come in and try to get me to read this book all the time. (laughs) The best kind of peer pressure. (laughs) She knew I'd really like it, but I just didn't read it. But I finally picked it up last summer, and I devoured it. I read four of the five books in one month. Holy cats! Look, I'm a reader. You are a reader. That's a lot of reading. Those are not small books. No, they are not small books. Well, I listened to them. Even but so, still, that's a commitment. Yeah, I mean, I was listening, reading them while doing housework or yard work, so it would kind of put me in another world while I'm doing these tasks that I don't necessarily like to do. Okay, this may be what gets me to do yard work. Absolutely, that's what helped me get through it. <laughs> so your friend pressured you, you caved to the bookish peer pressure. I did. 
I fell. And was she triumphant? Was she smug? Was she just really oh, glad she, that you guys could talk about it? <laughs> she would text me every couple days when I started reading it and ask me where I was in the book and then give little clues, but no spoilers. She mm-hmm. was very gracious. No spoilers. But she would ask me questions to get me thinking about storylines or plot or characters and stuff like that. So she was very, very happy I started reading it. I love that. It's such a way to connect with someone when you both find exactly. a book or, or a show that you can just both really engage in. It's really nice. Yeah, and I actually had another friend who I turned on to this series. She is a voracious reader, and so I could connect more with her through this series and mm-hmm. then we started chatting more and it was just it was really great to see our friendship grow like that. I love that. <laughs> it's really interesting to me that you mentioned having those text conversations with your friend where she was checking in to see where you were and asking you questions. Because one of the things that I've seen on social media are a lot of memes about that almost paired reading experience where Someone is texting their friend, have you gotten to this page yet? Have you gotten to this scene? There's a specific page number. Chapter 67. Is it chapter 67? Uh, 65, 67. There's a chapter that everybody's talking about, and I don't know what it is. But (laughs) clearly, if you have read the book, it's like a whole new world opens up to you in terms of internet pop culture references. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, my friends actually have a text chain of just memes now of (laughs) Akatar. All right. And Sarah J. Mass just came out with a new entry in another series, the third book in the Crescent City series, Mm -hmm. which is also this sort of romanticy, which is a genre that we have seen absolutely explode in the last three to four years, largely because of her books. And it's romantic elements, strong romantic elements, set in a really immersive fantasy world. And certainly people have been writing these sorts of books all along, but she seems to have lifted it into the stratosphere, almost in the way that Colleen Hoover has done for contemporary romance. Yeah, I'd say so. They're very bingeable reads. The pacing is fast. They take you through all the ups and downs of the story, the character arcs. Sarah J. Mass does do a really good job with cliffhangers, too. That's what I have heard. Oh, oh! you just need more. There are some character deaths, is what I have been led to understand. There are some character close calls. There are some character deaths. You love these characters. You hate these characters. She takes you on a ride. So it is set in a fantasy world. I'm assuming that there are a lot of battles, a lot of action scenes. Would that be correct? Yeah, there are a lot of action scenes, fight scenes, and battles mixed in with a lot of dialogue and character building and world building. So it sounds like it's got a little something for everybody. Yeah, I'd say it does, yeah. Who's the ideal reader for this kind of book? Do you like to go to the Ren Fair? Do you like romance novels? This is for you. <laughs> okay. I think that sums it up nicely. I do like to go to the Ren Fair, mostly for the people watching. Oh, it's so great. There's something for everybody there, there as really well. There really is. Yeah. I could go to the Ren Fair and just sit on a bench with like a giant lemonade oh. and just watch people all day. The frozen lemonade and the cheese curds. Oh. I hope there are cheese curds in Feyre's world. Oh, I very much hope that for her. What about for people who have read this series? They've gone through all five books. Maybe they've read everything that Sarah J. Mass has written. What might be a good read-alike for them? Or conversely, if people are fans of book XYZ, they might enjoy this series. Well, like I said, I'm not really a reader, so I don't think I can give you authors or series like that. But I have seen many fantasy and world-building shows and movies, Mm -hmm. and I'd put these kind of in the same category, minus some of the heat of the Ekatar series. I'd say Shadow and Bone. Yes, it is a book, though. Yep. I haven't read it. Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon, Mm -hmm. which Game of Thrones is a book series. Haven't read it. (laughs) That's okay. Dune, Wheel of Time. All of those are really good fantasy world-building stories. And I will say the Outlander series will give you that kind of fantasy world with the heat. Okay. So in terms of 
heat level or open door, closed door, you're going to get something more similar to an Outlander. Yeah, I'd say so. That is good to know. Well, like I said, this series really has turned into this cultural phenomenon, and it feels very authentic. It feels like it has all come about from word of mouth. There's really nothing that beats a friend-recommended book. You go to somebody you trust, and they say, I love this thing. You have to read it so we can talk about it. And that is the gold seal. But if you guys at home are still struggling to find exactly the right title, we are here to help. All you need to do is stop by the information desk or fill out our Ask a Bookie form on the website, and we can give you a personalized list of suggestions, no matter what kind of book you're in the mood for. Bronwyn, thank you so much for coming in and talking about this today. I have been so eager to hear your thoughts. And thanks to all of you for listening. We'll be sure to put links to all of the titles we've mentioned in the show notes. And remember, you can always find us on the library's website, Shelf Life the Blog, or by emailing us at webmaster at cooklib.org. As always, you can support the podcast by sharing it with your friends and subscribing wherever you like to listen. We'll be back soon. But until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. Bye!